What is up guys, Tech James here. In this video, we're going to be testing out this custom Game Boy Color housing, which was sent to me by Extreme Rate. Now this housing is insane. Normally when you go on eBay, you see those kind of like basic Game Boy Color housings and stuff like that. This housing right here, the Extreme Rate sent me for this video, just looks really cool. It's so unique. I've actually never seen anything like it. What I'm going to do is I'll leave the link to their website and their Amazon listings and stuff like that in the description of this video. So if you guys like the look of it, if you think it looks cool, make sure to go ahead and check it out. All links will be in the description. So these guys actually create some really unique housing designs, uh, wood grain ones, galaxy effects, ones with like images on. You do see this custom housing quite a bit on Instagram, but most of it is hand painted. So these guys make it and obviously they sell it so anyone can get this for their Game Boy. This Game Boy color right here, I actually got this in an abandoned house. I actually found this Game Boy. Uh, the house was actually going to be torn down, so I basically saved this Game Boy. And in this video, we're basically going to restore it. Uh, the reason why I chose this Game Boy, the condition of it isn't really too bad the label is a bit scuffed up obviously the back cover right here and um, this is where the batteries would go this was completely missing I couldn't find it um, so this Game Boy does work probably haunted as well which is pretty cool and then um, we're going to be installing some of the extreme rate custom housings onto this Game Boy these guys paint them I don't know if they hydro dip them um, but the quality of them just looks really good and apparently they're soft touch as well um, so let's just go ahead let's open some let me show you guys both the housings and then we can actually install one onto my Game Boy Color so like I said, they sent me two of them, but they've got many different designs over on their website. So the first one we've got right here is this Japanese wave. Now this wave does have a name. Um, I can't actually remember what it was. Um, I'll put it on the screen or I'll leave a link to this in the description anyway. Um, but yeah, it looks really cool. Like I said, you do see this types of thing, like these types of custom Game Boys um, on Instagram. But most of the time they're hand painted. Obviously these are plastics and they're not going to wear off or anything like that. Obviously in the box we've got the screen, got the buttons. We've also got some tools and we've also got like this kind of like... Um, I don't know, what would you call that, spatula tool to um, take the screen out, so that's very useful. And we've got three screws as well, and they, I guess they're for the motherboard screws because um, the screws at the back are actually like tri-rings, so yeah, they look like motherboard ones. Um, we'll have a look in a minute as well. Uh, we've got a screen, we have got the metal contacts with the battery, oh, we, okay, we have got all of the screws, so it does actually come with everything, that's very good. Uh, obviously, they've just separated a bit. Um, so those are the screws for like the back housing. We've got the screen as well, buttons, all of that kind of stuff. We've also got a, what's this, like one year warranty. So it says get one year warranty now and you can follow their social media. They've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and TikTok by the looks of it. And um, that's the instructions if you guys want to get one year warranty if you purchase one of these products. So let me just give you a quick look at the housing. Um, like I said, they said it was soft touch as well. And the nice thing about their housings, they actually put the proper Nintendo logo on. I've noticed quite a lot on eBay won't actually have this logo. Um, so it's nice to actually see it. And um, that's the back. Obviously, we've got the battery compartment. Again, it has the Game Boy logo. If you guys are wondering about the sticker, I did actually see it in the bag. Um, if we take it apart, that's what it looks like inside. Very clean. Um, I think I'm going to take a look at the other housing and then we can actually get around to install one of them so let's open the second one and this one is a galaxy kind of like blue and purple theme I guess that's what you could call it now the interesting thing about this one is depending on how you're holding it the color might actually look a little bit different I'll show you guys that in a minute uh, let me just check uh, we've got the screen all the tools they literally come with everything and of course that one year warranty um, kind of notice as well yeah, I actually really like this case, depending on how you tilt it. I don't know if the camera's doing it justice, to be honest, um, but it goes from purple to kind of like a light blue color to like a galaxy blue. This looks really nice. Yeah, I like this one. That's really, really cool. If I if the camera's not doing it justice, I'll try and get a nice picture of it um, with my phone or something. But um, yeah, I actually really like that. Inside, it's kind of like... Looks like it's been um, hydro dip this one. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, let me know in the comments, of course. And of course, we've got the back cover. And the same as this one. It's got all the Game Boy logos on. It's got the Nintendo logos on. Um, so yeah, it looks like a really professional um, kind of housing. 
Right, so I've got my Game Boy Color, the haunted one. What we're going to do um, is there's actually six um, tri-ring screws. We've got two at the top, two in the middle, and two down here in the battery compartment. Um, what I'm going to do is actually get the tri-ring screwdriver. I think that's the name. I think I'm saying that correctly. Um, which is, there should be two in here. There should be a Phillips one which looks like this one and then we've, of course we've got the trying one here now the screws um, down here I'm pretty sure these are for the motherboard uh, so make sure you don't lose them obviously you've got the original ones in your um, Game Boy Color as well so yeah just get your tri ring what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these out and um, I'm just going to do a jump cut right now actually maybe I'll just take the first one out just to show you guys and be kind of careful it should be fairly easy, easy to take them out Alright, so that is all six screws out. Um, put those to the side and make sure you don't lose them. And what we want to do now is just simply take the back cover off. It should just like take off like that very easily. So once your Game Boy Color is looking like this, this is actually the perfect opportunity to clean it before you put your custom housing on. Mine's got some kind of oil substance. I don't know what that is. That doesn't look too good. Um, but there's three Phillips screws that you want to take out. We've got one here, one next to the Nintendo logo, and one here kind of next to this battery spring. So um, what you could do is go ahead and take all these out now. We've also got the screen. Um, ribbon cable at the top here. I also like to take that out. Now there's these two little plastic notches. What you're supposed to do is kind of just lift these up. So you can do it with your nail or you can do it with a screwdriver. So that's one up. Then we do the second one as well. Just take it out like that. Now I wouldn't bother taking it out yet. Um, I'll do it as you take the whole motherboard out. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our Phillips head screwdriver and we're going to take out all of these screws. Um, here's my one right here. Let's just go ahead and take them out right now. Okay, so here we are on the final one. This one um, comes out. These screws are actually magnetized, um, so that's very good. You won't lose your screws or anything like that. So what we can actually do from here is take the entire motherboard out. So I'd recommend taking out your um, buttons as well. We have got the um, power button. That one literally just slides out, put that to the side. And um, I think um, we've also got this IR sensor thing at the top here. I think that's an IR sensor, is that what we call it? I don't know, but we're going to take that out as well. And then we should actually be able to just take the whole motherboard out. And like I said, make sure to disconnect um, the um, kind of like put pins at the top, pull them out. And then it just makes it so easy to take the motherboard away from the screen. There's your motherboard, clean it if you want to. Obviously, be very careful. And then there you go. That's pretty much it. It's actually very simple. We've also got the screen. I'm going to take that out in a minute. We need to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to actually soften the glue. And then you're going to use that plastic kind of spray bachelor thing that they um, left in the package. Oh, also, before you use like a hairdryer or a heat gun, it's a good idea to actually just take all the buttons off. Obviously, you don't want to melt any of this rubber. I mean, I don't think you should, you know, you've only got to hold it on there for four minutes, but it's always a good idea just to take all the buttons out the original housing. Okay, so obviously I had to make that bit a bit quieter. The hairdryer is very loud. I actually found a really useful way to get your Game Boy screens out without cracking them, damaging them, or anything like that. Um, what I actually did is I just got a train ticket. Um, it's actually found a use for train tickets. And what I did is I just folded it in half, and I actually used this to kind of like lever the screen off. Now be careful, your Game Boy is going to be very hot. And um, great, now my train ticket stuck to the glue. Um, yeah, so this is actually burning my hand. Ah, oh, that's really hot. Um, um, so yeah, be very careful and obviously um, just kind of like use the train ticket, put it underneath and you should be able to lift it off. And um, don't put your fingerprints um, on the front of the screen because you don't want to like smudge it or anything like that. Uh, it's actually burning my hand. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this cool down. Um, I shouldn't really leave it on the carpet, but um, uh, it's better than nothing. So yeah, I'm just going to wait for this to cool down and then we can add it um, into the custom housing. Okay, so right now we're just going to wait for the screen to cool down. We will put it in in a minute, um, but while we're waiting for it, what we can actually do is sort out the front and back housing. We've got to add that metal part, we've got to add our buttons, of course we've got to add the um, plastic screen which goes on the front. What I'm going to do is just take them out of the packets. So it comes with this. I haven't actually opened this yet, so let's open it now and let's have a look at everything. Looks like we have got our A and B buttons, we have got that uh, kind of like IR thing, we've got our um, D-pad here, we have got the, that one is the select and start, kind of like rubber buttons, we have got that metal plate that goes at the back, and we've also got that metal um, spring for the battery. Uh, we've got the D-pad cover right here. We have got the Game Boy Color uh, glass screen, that's the one that goes at the front. Um, we have got the Game Boy Color um, 
back sticker. This gives you like the model number. Actually, this one's really cool. If you look at it like that, you can't see anything. And when you like tilt it into the light, you can slightly read it. And the camera is picking that up. I quite like that. It's actually pretty cool. Um, and that's it. So that's everything we've got. Um, what I'm actually going to do first is screw on this onto the back housing. And um, we can also put that um, battery spring, which is right here. So if you flip your back housing over, what you want to do is get this battery spring right here. And what it actually does is it just clips in. Um, you don't have to screw it on or anything like that. You literally just um, slot it in there and then you simply just push it down into the slot. And it should stay there uh, quite nicely. You might have to adjust it with your nail a bit, but as you can see, that's the direction I slotted it in, and um, that's definitely not going to fall out. So now we're going to sort out this metal plate. Um, what this does is kind of like um, shine, like where the cartridge would go, so you just want to turn it over. Um, this one is white um, at the back, and we're just going to sit it just like that. So these holes are kind of just going over them, um, so just push it into place I guess should sit exactly like that there you go that's perfect and then we want to get these four Phillips head screws and we just want to screw them in to the four screws right here these two at the top um, that's where the um, motherboard um, tri-ring screws go this is what it's going to look like when you've got all four of the screws in and when you turn it over um, you're going to see this shine and that's where the um, game cartridges will go next thing we've got to do is we have got the screen um, we've got the front face plate we've got all the buttons as well we're going to take out these buttons um, this um, package right here also contains the um, motherboard screws that hold the motherboard together um, so make sure you don't lose those um, but let's just take out all of the buttons we're just going to go ahead and put all those on first so the buttons it's very simple you get the d-pad you just line it up with that notch like that there you go connects very easily we've also got this kind of like um, rubber bit which just simply um, clips over the top that will go exactly like this so that straight edge will just run down there and um, they've actually got these two notches and you just push the rubber over there and it should clip on um, really nice and then of course you've got the A and B buttons as well quite an easy mistake to make with A and B is getting them around the wrong way um, so B will actually go um, the one that's more towards the center just above the start and select buttons that will just um, slot in like that and of course we've got A um, this one is just going to go here obviously so we're just going to lay that and we've also got one of those rubber pieces which is right here and um, this one's even easier it's literally just got like a, a bigger notch and then there's a smaller notch and then simply just lay it over A and B we've also got the start and select now this one it doesn't matter you can't get this wrong literally just push it in like that and we've also got the um, volume and this piece right here which goes at the top but I think we're going to add those when we start to add the motherboard what we can actually do is um, put the Game Boy screen on so what you want to do you just want to turn it around just like this make sure this area is clean um, obviously if you do smudge it it's not going to show but it's always a good idea just so it sticks on and um, what we can actually do is peel the sticker off and then you simply just want to stick it on just like that Okay, so this part, make sure you're very careful because you want to peel off this sticker, but you really don't want to get your fingerprints um, behind the screen. So we're just going to go ahead, we're going to be very gentle, and we're just going to peel it just like that, being very careful not to put any fingerprints in the center of the screen. So just peel it, take it off, and then of course you just want to flip over our Game Boy, and we're simply just going to stick it onto the housing. So simply just line it up like that, and you can just go ahead and stick this on. Okay, so once you think you've got it kind of in the center, make sure to just press around all of the edges, just making sure it's stuck. And we've also got this kind of like screen protector. I mean, you can leave it on if you want to. I like to take it off. And there you go. That is looking really, really clear, really nice. And what we're actually going to do now is we're going to put the screen behind it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add in the screen. Mine has actually stuck to my ticket. You also don't want to get fingerprints on these contacts up here. Now, it doesn't matter too much, but just be a bit careful. And what we're going to do is simply just lay the screen in. Now, some people like to add extra glue. Um, to be honest, I don't really think it makes a difference. I mean, I wouldn't bother. It's still got glue on there from when it was unstuck. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't add extra glue. And sometimes you might want to take it off or adjust it or something like that. So adding extra glue um, can actually screw you over. Um, but it should be sitting in fairly nicely now. And what we can actually do is uh, flip it over have a look we might have a few fingerprints um, obviously we can clean it up a bit doesn't matter if the fingerprints are on the front make sure there's no fingerprints inside mine is looking very nice and um, what we can actually do now is start to put our Game Boy back together and then we can actually see if it works hopefully we haven't broken anything 
So we've got a power button, we've got that top piece, and what I'd recommend doing is sitting them in, but just making sure it's um, where the off goes. So that's going to be just slot down here. So you want to have it just like this, and um, it simply just goes in the slot right here, if I can even put it in. It's actually quite fiddly. So in the slot right there, just make sure it's in the off position. Then we're just going to lay the whole motherboard on. That should be quite nice now. You can actually just check if it works. I mean, we don't have any batteries in, so I guess it doesn't really matter too much. Make sure it actually turns on and off. Of course, we're going to put a ribbon cable in in a second. We've also got this piece right here. Um, this sits at the top. I guess you could use the original Game Boy one if you wanted to, um, but like I said, it doesn't really matter too much. This piece literally just clips in at the top. So there you go, hopefully you guys can see that okay. Um, I've actually got the wider side of the plastic just here. That should be sitting in. What we can actually do now is we want to make sure the clips are upwards and we're actually just going to flex our ribbon cable and simply just clip it back in. I did say don't touch the gold parts, but it um, looks like I'm doing it anyway. Oh well. So then we're just going to push that in. Make sure to push these clips down as well, but only push them down when it's sitting in there nicely. Make sure you don't forget your motherboard screws. We've got one, two, and three. Okay, so all three motherboard screws are done up. Keep in mind this housing is brand new, so you might have to do it up a little bit tighter. Anyway, sometimes your power button um, or the IR pad right up here, they might fall out. Don't worry too much. Literally, just go ahead and just put it back in. And what we need to do now is we actually need to put the back of the case on. So here's mine. We're literally just going to lay it over the top. Just try and line it up. If your buttons fall out, simply just put them back in. Okay, so once you've clipped it on and it's looking flush, what you want to do is get your motherboard screws and we actually just want to basically just put it together. Okay, so this is the last screw and there you go. That is all of the six screws in. Obviously, we've got two in the battery compartment, two in the middle, two at the top. Now, when I first put this together, I was a bit worried because I noticed, hang on a second, I've still got three screws which are left out. But I realized they probably put spare motherboard screws in here. Well, I hope I haven't left anything out, but I'm pretty sure I haven't. So there you go. Now, this comes together very nicely. I've had these housings in the past from eBay, kind of cheap ones, and they just didn't look nice. There was like gaps between everything and um, this one was just so easy to put together. The buttons click nicely. Um, everything's just really good. Well, I hope it works. What we're going to do, we'll get some batteries. We can put those stickers at the back as well. I've still got this sticker right here. Um, we can probably add this on now actually. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel it off just like that and then go ahead and just stick it on. I just did that off camera just so I could get it perfect, but I'm happy with that. There you go. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm just going to go and find some batteries, and then we can see um, what it looks like. Well, I just spent about half an hour trying to find some AA batteries. I think these are AA's. And um, finally, we can see if it works. I also found some games. I've got Pokemon Red on the original Game Boy, and I've also got Pokemon Crystal on the Game Boy Color to test out. So let's put in the batteries, and then what we can do is we can put on the cover. Oh yeah, you've got to make sure you've got both of these um, notches in at the top. There you go, that clips on very nicely. It doesn't rattle or anything like that. Um, let's test out one of the games. Let's try Pokemon Crystal first. Let's go ahead, let's put this in turns on we've got our Game Boy screen now the Game Boy color is very hard to see obviously this one doesn't have a backlight in it so I'm just gonna have to kind of position this so you guys can see it obviously our volume will be working as well I guess we can try Pokemon Red as well I don't really know how to position this so you guys can see it, um, but all the buttons work fine, you know, I can press start, um, you know, I can start up a new game and everything like that. Um, yeah, it's actually really nice. I really like this housing. It actually just looks like really cool. Let me just jump into a game. Oh, this is a save I made. I probably made this when I was like a kid. Actually, I probably got this game around about 2009 or something. I can't remember when I got this. Um, but looks like we're fighting a Pidgey. So there you go, guys. I really like these housings. Make sure to check out Extreme Rate. Obviously, I'm going to leave the links to all of their stuff in the description. Um, like I said, this one is color changing. So as you start to tilt it around, it will shift from purple to blue. But I just don't think the camera does it justice. It looks really, really nice in real life. And of course, I've got that other um, case as well. Maybe I'll install that on another Game Boy if I can find one. That is pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe. If you're new to the channel, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.